Hello, welcome to today's show. Would you like to see me lap a barrel? If you do, come on back. As with all my videos dealing anything to do with a firearm or whatever, this video's purpose is not to instruct, it is only for entertainment. There is no warranty, the written or implied in none shall be inferred. Now, lapping a barrel. This can be a controversial subject. Why? Because everyone has an opinion and everyone seems to think they're an expert. I am no expert, nor rich, but what is the worst that could happen? I bugger up a barrel, yes. I do what I do, right, wrong, or somewhere in between. Self-proclaimed experts always say, start from the breach. Why? Well, you never seem to get an answer. My opinion is this, okay? If we are lapping the bore to create a smooth uniformity, then both ends will match as well the middle. Therefore, I don't worry too much about it. I'd rather it be easy to clean. If there were a difference in size or tightness, if you will, which end would it be better to be a tad bigger? Probably the slow end, right? There's another thing, lead is non-rebounding. Like kids modeling clay, you mash it, it stays mashed. So if the bore is tighter at the breech than at the muzzle, a possibility exists that the bullet could get more loose down the barrel and be less stable. Starting at the breech, there are bound to be more strokes, more times. It enters there, it exits there, and maybe you don't reach the end of the stroke every single time. Perhaps the entry is more prone to being larger. But with a complete head-spaced AR barrel, barrel extension installed, it is difficult to start at the breech. It is certainly harder to cast the lap. So I work from the muzzle, try for even strokes, use hard leads, melted wheel weights to be exact. It is more difficult to work with, but it holds its shape well. That's what I do. In this video, I will add in some stills I had on file from a different barrel being lapped. What I've got set up here is I've got a tree. It's a two by four. It's been trimmed down. I got a notch in. I got a little gate holder to keep it from falling out. Ladle to melt my little lead in. Lead, what I use for lead on the lap itself is wheel weights. It's a, it's a hard, it's got a lot of tin in it. I don't know what percentage, but it's got quite a bit of tin in it, uh, which makes it a very hard lead cast. Um, torch and these things are made to kind of work together the same right it only takes a minute to heat it up had advice these are just pieces of wood you might remember them from cabinet bottom repair i don't throw anything away and it's probably something to be ashamed of except i don't really care i always use it for something so now i've got an old uh, 22 caliber cleaning rod through here aluminum um, how i've done the top is what this is is a couple layers of 88 plus scotch 88 plus to get it very close to the bore diameter and then i wrap it with ptfe uh, plumber's tape thread tape it makes it fit nice and tight the top all this is right here is a dirty bore mop that i just took a torch to and burn off the the threads and what it does it makes a really nice um, um thing for the lead to work on now i'll pull this bag down i will get it about where i think i want it down in the barrel some people may heat the barrel only purpose you might have in heating the barrel is it gives the lead a little bit more time to get going uh you know so it flows a little longer down in it sometimes you might get a little a bubble at the very end i'm just going to get this started okay we're melted so now what i'm going to do is Go ahead and kill the heat and take this and carefully without spilling on my combustible flooring. And hopefully we didn't have any air gaps form in that. And I'll pour the rest of it on the ceramic plate to make a little piece to go back in for next melt. It helps me kind of keep that 
bit of that dross that shows up on top out of the next batch. Now, what I'm going to do is push this up from the bottom. Looks pretty good. Unscrew it. Now, what I need to do is it's going to be hot like this one. Okay, I need to take the end off, kind of round it up so it goes down in the depth of the barrel, and then cut little grooves, a little air bubble, and then make little grooves in it like this so that it'll hold the compound. And we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back from below. And let's see if I can get this up here close. See little grooves and a little air bubble right there. Little grooves cut into it. With the Dremel just to give it compound something to kind of fall into as it's pulling it back and forth. We're going to take it off of the uh, 22's rod and put it on this all fiber Tipton and with any luck we should be able to at least get it to find its way back in we'll put a little oil on it and I should be able to Let's see if that did it. And if there's a burr on the end where I ground it, it's going to be tough. Okay. Almost. There we go. Right at the end. Now. Uh, Get me a little piece of white tape. And put it around the shaft right there. Now, move that one out of the way. We'll start with some 320, there we go. Gooey stuff, very, very sticky. We're going to give me a paper towel. Okay, beginning. See how it's a little bit of a struggle at first. Okay. Let me put whoops out too far. get another paper towel now can you see it's beginning to draw uh. okay 
I think it's about all that. <coughs> that I'm going to do. I'm going to take, where's me a paper towel? Just gonna drag the heavy out and put the six hundred in. We are just about finished, kind of. Making sure we don't have any goo left in there. <clears throat> 